Hey, how's it going everybody? Welcome back to another episode here of Ark Survival Evolved coming at you from the island. I just want to start off by saying a huge thank you for all of your wonderful support throughout this series. My friends, I very much do appreciate it. Of course, if you want to continue supporting the series, the easiest way to do so is simply to drop a like. Of course, if you're new to the channel, do consider subscribing if you don't want to miss out on my future Ark content here. And of course, if you do want to go one further and be an absolute MVP, use code Python when ordering any sneak energy drinks or to get 5% off any of my Apex gaming PCs. So then, you remember in the last episode how we went ahead and took out one of the uh, Hesperornis, that little sort of duck looking dude on the pond? Well, we got organic polymer from that, and do you know what organic polymer is used for? creating gilly armor. Now, thankfully, it doesn't actually require a great amount of organic polymer. So that one duck dude that we did take out is, in fact, enough to make ourselves a full set of gilly armor. So, once again, we are upgrading in terms of armor value and also upgrading in terms of the fact that this is basically like an invisibility cloak to all the disgusting buggies that exist in the cave. So, once again, off with the old and in with the new. 160 armor value is now the amount we have. 60% higher than that of the total of hide armor. Pretty cool, eh? So that's one odd job done for today's episode. The next odd job comes in the form of the comment of the day here. We've got Pyriel who says, I think your next goal should be getting a spyglass and maybe a magnifying glass. I believe with Terrans you can find the resources easily. Yes, you're absolutely right. I think we need to go on a little bit of a crystal hunt, my friendos. We literally need only two in order to make ourselves a spyglass. So that is what we are going to go for right now, okay? A spyglass is going to be massively useful in terms of scouting out dinos and more to the point, high-level dinos that you might be wanting to tame. The other resources required aside from crystal are fiber, hide, and wood. And the good news is we've got all of those things in bulk. So we don't need to worry about that stuff. So let's grab Terrence and let's go hunting for some crystals, my friends. So probably the easiest way to find crystals is simply to find a mountain and go to the top of it. You usually get deposits of metal, obsidian in some cases, and crystal. So where is our nearest mountain? That is the question. Let's just pop ourselves up here. Uh, it would appear that one over there to our left. Since we have a blue loot beam here, ladies and gentlemen, I see no reason why we can't go ahead and see what it has. A metal foundation blueprint. Okay, I mean, I don't have it unlocked in terms of an engram, so it's going to be useful in some way or another, I guess. So here we are, my friendos. This, I do believe, is actually the tech cave entrance, but we're actually not that fussed about that. What we are fussed about is grabbing some of these here crystals. Oh, snappers. There's lots and lots of them. And not only that, but look at this. We've got obsidian deposits, right? These black rocks here, they're obsidian. We've got these crystal bits here, which is great. The only thing is, we don't have a great deal of carry way on our Tyranodon here. So what that means for us is we are going to need to get only the minimal amount of crystals. Once we get ourselves an Argentavis on the other hand, later on in the game, we will be able to harvest a whole bunch of epic resources. Now, as I mentioned before, it's not just obsidian and crystals you can find up on these mountains here. Rich metal rocks. These yellow rocks right here, these will grant you the highest yield of metal. They are absolutely ridiculous. And if you manage to set up your base next to one, you are basically golden for your entire playthrough, basically. In our case, though, we are going to need to use an Ankylosaurus and an Argentavis combo in order to get our metal supply. But you know what? That's neither here nor there. It's no skid off my nose. I'd rather have a nice safe base. Yeah! That's why Hydrodons, you and my good sirs, are getting wrecked. Now, for those of you guys who don't know, Hyenodons are basically my mortal enemy in this entire game. They are such a ginormous pain in the butt to deal with. They truly are. However, the one good thing about them is they will actually give you a decent amount of XP. So, look at that. We've got 200 carry weight on our Tyranodon now. Very cool. So here we 
we are back at base, my friends. All we need to do now is grab ourselves some wood here, and there we have it, the spyglass. And basically, the reason you want this bad boy is so you can scout out the levels of any distant creatures. So, yeah, look at that, Dimorphodon level 15. We wouldn't be able to see that it was level 15 without the spyglass. So, yeah, pretty darn useful, my friends. So, the next thing we are going to do, ladies and gentlemen, is grab ourselves a whole bunch of metal ingots that I have been smelting since the last episode, and we are going to use these bad boys to create ourselves a long neck rifle. Now, here's the thing. The long neck rifle is actually one of the more expensive things to craft, requiring 95 metal ingots. So, yeah, I had to go ahead and bash quite a few river rocks to get the amount needed for this bad boy. But there we have it. We have this bad boy now. And eventually, what's going to happen is we are going to get ourselves tranquilizer darts. So let's have a look here. We need to be level 62 in order to get the basic version of the tranquilizer dart. And at level 96, we can get the shocking tranquilizer dart, which is the best in terms of taking down large dinos very, very quickly in terms of a knockout. So yeah, I'm glad that we're beginning to make a start on this thing right now, my friends. I really, really am. For now, we're just going to go ahead and uh, put this in our gear chest, but we know we have this thing now. So once we do get Tranquilizer Darts, we will be golden, my friends. And check it out as well, my friends. We are not that far from being able to make ourselves both an Ankylo saddle and a Dodecura saddle. So, do you know what? Let's go ahead and prepare ahead of time for that as well. So, there we are. Dodecura saddle. And there's the Ankylo saddle. Now, both of these do require mental lingers as well. But thankfully, we had a bit of a surplus going on. So, we are looking good, baby. So, just to remind you, the reason you want a Dodecura is because they are fantastic at getting and storing stone on them and we've got an ankylo and the reason you want those is because they are fantastic at gathering and storing metal on them as well so yeah two very good resource dinos that we will most definitely be getting ourselves hopefully in the near future for now though they'll just go away in a storage chest and we'll get them back out if and when we need them so one of the other bits of feedback you guys were leaving in the comments area was the fact that we can go ahead and level up certain harvesting levels on the moss chopsters. So if we go into this, I've actually already begun on doing this, but I simply forgot to show you that this exists. But basically, you could go ahead and increase the harvest of very, very specific resources that this guy is capable of getting. Now, the only four things that I am leveling up is organic polymer, leech blood, rare mushrooms, and rare flowers. In terms of me, I'm really not that fussed because we're going to wind up going ahead and getting that via different means anyway. And sap is actually something I don't think I've ever harvested in the entire time I've played up. Maybe this is the series to do so, eh? But for now, I'm going to go ahead and uh, spread the levels up between these four things here. The organic polymer, leech blood, rare mushrooms, and rare flowers. So next up, we ourselves have a couple of levels up. So let's go ahead and see what we can get at level 45 here. A whole bunch of metal-related building stuff, eh? Yeah, very, very cool. Uh, greenhouse. Could be a cool idea. Cementing paste, we can get that if we get ourselves a Beelze Buffo, aka a frog. Uh, and yeah, I don't know. I always say that I really do want to make a greenhouse, but I've never actually done it because the resources needed for each part are a little bit on the steep side, if I'm being honest. We need metal, crystals, and cementing paste. So I think what we'll do is we'll unlock these things, and once we get ourselves an Argentavis a little bit later in the series, we will actually give this thing a go, okay? Next up on the odd jobs list is actually me testing out a theory. Some of you guys were going ahead and saying that apparently you can use Pegos as a little bit of a sort of mobile backpack. So let's say I go ahead and dig up some river rock here. We grab ourselves a bunch of metal. Okay. What we're going to do is we are going to store the metal on the pego and if my theory is correct we shouldn't wind up having an increase to our person's weight, our character's weight, okay? So, currently, this guy's carry weight is 68.9. If I was to put a whole bunch of metal in his inventory, what we're going to try and find out is whether or not that weight that is now on the pego is going to apply to us. So, let's just have a look here. Our current weight is 69.6, okay? If I was to pick this guy up, our weight now is 97.1. Right, that's kind of interesting, actually, because that is not an increase of 55. That's very interesting indeed, in fact. 
It only sort of increased it by about half the weight here. Huh. Okay. So if I was to go ahead and bring down my Pteranodon, would it mean that this guy is encumbered if I have the Pego on my back? Let's have a bit of a look, shall we? So once again, our weight without the Pego is 69.6. Our weight with the Pego is 97.1. Okay. So let's go ahead and uh, check out our weight once we're on this guy here. So 94.7. Okay. Let's grab the Pego. We'll get on the back of this guy. And the weight now is 122. Okay. So it definitely does add weight to your character and therefore any flying mount or any other mount that you've got going on. But in the case of the Pega, it seems to only increase it by about half of this weight value here. So yeah, it could function as a little bit of a backpack, just not a very effective one. Not as effective as, let's say, the Sinoma crops from Lost Island. But hey-ho, any kind of additional storage is good storage. So do you know what, Paul? You are going to stay on my shoulder forevermore. <laughs> yeah, we can have all sorts of epic adventures together, man. It's going to be great. But now, though, give me the metal because I'm going to smelt it up. I wonder what the weight value increases by with each level. Wow. What, probably about two? Sweet gosh. If we want any kind of meaningful weight on this guy, we are going to need to rank him up a whole heck of a ton, my friend. <laughs> And with another level up just applied to ourselves, we've got ourselves the Kano saddle. Do you know what? I'm going to take it, my friends. I'm going to take it. Kano's are a great all-round team. They're much more of a tanky team, but they are a great team to have. They really are. So next up on the odd jobs list, we actually have two things that I'd like to make. We have a preserving bin, which I've just unlocked. And before the episode began, I unlocked the bookshelf as well. Both of these have very, very good usages. So let's start off with the bookshelf, shall we? As you can see, the tooltip says a large bookshelf to store blueprints, notes, and other small trinkets in. Now, we're not going to be using it in terms of storing our comments of the day notes, but what we will do is we will go ahead and use them to store our blueprints, okay? So if we go into any of these chests here, you can see we've got a few blueprints sort of laying around. And basically, all we are going to do is transfer them into here. And as you can see, we have 100 slots in here compared to just 45 inside of a regular chest. So yeah. It really does make the bookshelf worthwhile crafting. It truly does. Although, to be honest with you, maybe we could go ahead and uh, make ourselves a bookshelf for our comment of the day notes. I mean, if we've got more storage space, that's going to make things way the heck easier, isn't it? And while we're at it, we're also going to make ourselves our first preserving bin. And then we'll check that out in just a hot second here. And check it out. You can even rename the bookshelf so you know what is in there. So there we are. Comment of the day notes. Yeah, and this one simply just has blueprints in it because, yeah, we need somewhere to store those bad boys, eh? I mean, maybe in the future, if we start getting ourselves quite a lot of blueprints, maybe we can split them depending on what they are. Like, for example, I don't know, gear, maybe armor, and then maybe just generic building stuff and other stuff. But certainly for now, this storage solution works a treat, my friend. So next up is the preserving bin. The question is, where are we going to put it? I mean, the logical place, I guess, would be in this corner somehow. Oh man, we're starting to run out of space here, my friendos. Oh yes, we are. Hmm, maybe this is something we store outside, eh? So let's go ahead and do this thing. Do we have space sort of in the middle here? Uh... Yeah, sure. That kind of works. At least we can access all three of them still. Yeah, nice. Okay, and now all we've got to do now is grab ourselves out a whole bunch of spark powder because that basically is the fuel for the preserving bin. So if we just pop out here into its inventory, chuck that in there. As you can see, it's already consumed one. Now what you can do with the preserving bin as the name would suggest, is you can preserve things. So, for example, if we grabbed ourselves some prime meat, we could put it in the preserving bin and have ourselves a nice storage area for it. And it extends the duration of the spoil timer for the prime meat, so we don't wind up running out of prime meat every minute or so, you know. Ah, a sarco. Well, these guys will probably drop prime meat. It's usually the larger, more dangerous dude to wind up dropping prime meat. And sarcos can be rather devastating, especially with that death roll that you just saw right there. Uh, so yeah, come on. 
take this guy out of the game. And we'll see if I can't get some prime meat from this guy. Yeah. All right. And now, oh, wait, hang on a minute. There's a little baggy there. I need to get the contents of that baggy. I imagine there's a trophy in there, right? Yep, Sarko skin. Beautiful. Hey, check it out. There's also a pike. I don't even need to craft a pike now. Anyways, let's get ourselves back home and let's put the preserving bin to the test, eh? Because at the end of the day, if we have a way of preserving the prime meat, we basically have a supply of prime meat to use with any taming that we do. It's worth noting as well that if the prime meat is within the dino's inventory, it actually extends the spoil time there as well. So you can see 17 minutes here. We put it in our inventory. It reduces it to only four minutes. So what we're going to do is we're going to refine it by prime meat. We're going to grab all the prime meat, okay, and then we are going to scoot on over to our preserving bin and chuck it in here and then we'll see just how long it lasts for now. What have we got here? 41 minutes, Hey. Okay. That's not bad, is it? So yeah, my friends, I would definitely recommend going ahead and making a preserving bin or two. If you have a good amount of spark powder, then you've got a good amount of fuel for the freaking container here as well. So yeah, all good, man. Yeah, next little mini odd job is now that we have ourselves cementing paste, why don't we go ahead and create some wall torches? I've been wanting to do this for a little bit now. Uh, let's go ahead and put one just in the center here and we'll put the other one just in the center there all we need to do is grab ourselves some thatch or wood and then we should be able to fuel these bad boys my friendos so there we are light the fire and can i oh hang on a minute uh there we are if i jump up i can just about access that inventory yeah Oh, this feels so much more homely now that we've got the wall torches up. So then, it's been very much a wishy-washy odd jobs episode so far, hasn't it, ladies and gentlemen? But to finish off, we are going to do something a little bit larger. We are going to attempt to tame not one, but two tech parasols. Hopefully a breeding pair, a male and female, because tech creatures are fantastic if you want a source of metal, oil, electrics, and element dust at your base. So yeah, by doing that, we basically eradicate the need to go ahead and find rich metal rocks to get metal from, right? So, yeah, we just gotta get lucky in finding some tech parasols around here, bring them back to base, put them in a pen, have them breed up, and then, oh my goodness, that is, ladies and gentlemen, a baryonyx. Uh, that's not good. Those guys are... Ooh... These guys are kind of nasty. That's a high level one as well. Um, right. Terence, come over here. We may have to postpone that goal for now. Because I would really like to try and tame that Baryonyx. Baryonyxes, even though I can't ride it just yet, they are still a fantastic thing to have nearby. And for us to have a level 100 plus one right now is really kind of special. So let's have this guy on passive. We are going to whip a bowler on this guy and then hopefully we'll be okay hey buddy come on then come on hey buddy ha there we are ah! oh! okay uh sure that's oh i missed i missed oh i may be screwed here ladies and gentlemen wait what's he doing a little bit concerned I've no idea where that guy just went. All right, we're going to try that again. We're making ourselves some more bowler. The guy, by the way, is just like over there in the trees a little bit. Hopefully, the bowler that I throw this time will do the job. But yeah, to have ourselves a baryonyx of that caliber this early on is going to be fantastic. And then all we'd need to do is just level ourselves up to the point where we get a baryonyx saddle. And then we're golden, eh? Uh, I'm dead. I'm dead. I'm that's kind of annoying, isn't it, ladies and gentlemen? That is kind of annoying. Why are those guys bowler resistant? I swear to God, they were not. You were able to go ahead and immobilize those guys with a bowler. Quite why I have failed to restrict his movement is beyond me. I'm not so sure what's going on there. There may have been a stealth change, or maybe I'm just... Oh, really? Really, really? That's not cool. 
All right, uh, Pego is dead. Paul is dead. Not cool. All right, that means my freaking Tyranodon is next. Oh, wait, no, never mind. There he is. Okay, Terence is fine. Uh... All right, well, let's go grab our stuffs back here. Ooh, be quick about it. There we have it. Okay, I think we're good. I think we're good, my friends. I think we're good. Son of a gun. I'm right in my suspicions. Since version 316.18, Baryonyx can no longer be immobilized with bowlers. Ah, oh, okay. That means that Baryonyx taming is actually going to be a little bit more difficult, my friends. We're going to have to do it the old-fashioned way. Either we make a pen, or we perch ourselves on a high rock to the point where it can't get us. Or if we were on any of the more recent maps, we would be able to net projectile it with a harpoon launcher. Now, sadly, we can't get the net projectile because, like I say, this is is the island and apparently it's Genesis 2 onwards where we get this. Oh, it's so nice. I miss this thing already. We use this bad boy here to take on and tame a Quetzal, for goodness sake. My very first Quetzal in my personal arc history was only gotten in my recent Lost Island series. And to not have this in this series... Oh! Oh! It's, it's nasty. I don't like it, man. We've just got to hope that that Baryonyx does not come back near our house. Because if it does, we may just have to kill it. And that would be very, very unfortunate. Alrighty, my friends. Back to our tech parasaur goal. The good news is we don't even need to worry about what level these guys are. The tech parasaurs, as in. Because at the end of the day, we're only going to wind up breeding them and killing the offspring for resources, basically. So yeah, really doesn't matter. We just need to find a tech parasaur and hope that it's male or female depending on our situation at the time. Sweet. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I think we spotted this one previously, actually. Oh, no, it's only level 12. All right, we didn't spot this one previously. Do you know what? I'm so confident in being able to do this, I really don't even think I'm going to be needing a bowler. Like, seriously, I don't think we're going to need it, like, at all. This guy is already running away, and I feel like any minute now, he's going to wind up on the floor. Come on. Come on, what are you doing? Get out of here, Terence. Go on, that's it. You perch yourself there, and what we're going to do is give you some meteor berries, and then play the waiting game, my friends. It should only take... There we go. <laughs> that's all it needed. So, Perry the Tech Parasaur, you are going to need a female counterpart, eh? For now, though, we need to get this bride back to base. Come on, Perry! Whoa! <laughs> I wish I could drop down like that and not take any fall damage. That'd be fantastic, wouldn't it? Having rubber shoes or something. Yeah. All right. Well, that's one out of two tech parasaurs. We need only get ourselves a female one now. And then once we've done that, next episode, we'll make ourselves a tech parasaur breedery and ultimately a metal farm. Well, that's not a dangerous place at all to be roaming around there. Tech parasaur. What are you? Are you female? Yes, she is. All right, this time I will go ahead and uh, bowler her this time. Hello! There you go. And then what we're going to do uh, is completely miss our arrow. What we'll then do is hit an arrow in her head. Maybe a few times over. Okay, no, I've only twice over, apparently. That's all she needs. All right, well, uh, let's get some media berries on you. And then we play the waiting game, guys. There we go, ladies and gentlemen. Pam. Pam the tech power saw. Oh, yeah, look at that. We've got ourselves a little bit of a thingy here to reward us as well. Standing torches, a sign, a bed. Just a little bit of a resource pick-me-up, eh? Not too bad. Kind of like it. All right, let's get you back home and let's get you to meet Perry. In the meantime, I do have a level up here. So let's go ahead and begin on another bunch of weight level ups. And at level 47, we've got the Megalodon saddle. We could tame sharks if we wanted to. What the devil happened here? Why are you guys all over the place? I can only assume that someone tried to invade and massively failed. I certainly hope so anyway. <laughs> I don't think anyone's missing. Ah, well, never mind, ladies and gents. It seems that everybody's alive, aside from poor Paul. Can we get Rip Paul in the chat? Poor fella. Poor fella got absolutely wrecked by a Baryonyx, because apparently I hadn't brushed up on my update reading, apparently. I didn't realize that you couldn't bowl a Baryonyx anymore. I was kind of relying on that, wasn't I? <laughs> and ah well, it is what it is, my friends. It's the circle of life. We mourn, we move on. And do you know what we're going to be moving on to in the next episode? A tech parasaur breedery slash hatchery slash slaughtery slash resource farmery. 
Yes, that's what we're going to do. So, ladies and gentlemen, that is going to wrap it up for today's episode. I know, a bit of a wishy-washy, all-over-the-place, odd jobs episode, but sometimes you got to get stuff done, and I'd rather have you guys along for the ride than me just get a bunch of stuff done off-camera, come back in the next episode, and be like, oh, hey, this is what I did off camera. And you guys don't have any idea what I did. So, uh, yeah, hopefully that's okay with you. So, if you guys have enjoyed today's episode, I would very much appreciate it, of course, if you guys would head down below the video and spend a second to drop a like. It really does help out the video, the channel, and me massively. Like, really, it does. And I very much appreciate it. Hit the subscribe button if you don't want to miss out on my future content. But that will just about wrap it up, my friends. Thank you very much for watching. Do have yourselves a fantastic rest of your day. And I'll see you guys in the next episode. Bye-bye.